Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to draft, cut and sew a cow neck sleeveless top. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. Pattern paper, rulers and curves, paper scissors, fabric scissors, Ideally, a pencil should be used to draft a pattern, but for tutorial purpose, I'll be making use of these marker pens, pens, tape measure, calculator, two and a half yards of Dutchess satin fabric. I'll be working with the following measurements bust circumference 39 inches, waist circumference 35 inches. Hip circumference 43 inches, shoulder to sh shoulder to waistline 18 inches, shoulder to shoulder measurement 16 inches, blouse length 26 inches. So I have here my pattern paper which I've already laid out on the table and I've already drawn a margin of 2 inches at the top and on the left hand side of the pattern paper. What I intend to do now is to draft a dartless basic bodies block. I will compare my bust, my waist and my hip circumference measurements and determine which one is the largest measurement and in this case it is my hip circumference which is 43 inches. So I will use my hip circumference measurement to determine the width of a rectangular box which will contain both the front and the back patterns. To estimate the width of the rectangular box, I will use the formula hip circumference divided by 2 plus extra 3 inches for ease and this is equal to 43 over 2 plus 3 and this is equal to 24.5 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 24.5 inches like this. As for the length of the rectangular box, the length will be the blouse length which is 26 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 26 inches like this. I will now go ahead and draw the rectangular box. I will also divide the rectangular box into two equal halves vertically. Next, I will measure and mark one inch for the back shoulder line like this and I will square a line across horizontally. This side will be the back, while this other side will be the center front. For the front shoulder line, I will measure and mark 1.5 inches like this. Then I will square a horizontal line across like this. And this line is the front shoulder line. To estimate the armhole depth, I will use the formula bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches and this is 39 over 6 plus 1.5 and this is equal to 8 inches. So I will measure and mark 8 inches starting from the back shoulder line downwards like this. So the total ammo depth from the starting line is 9 inches. I will square a line across to the center back and to the center front like this. For the waistline, I will use my shoulder to waistline measurement which is 18 inches. 
so i will go ahead to measure and mark 18 inches from the starting line downwards like this I will now square a horizontal line to the center back and to the center front. And this line is the waistline. I will now go ahead and draw the neckline curves. For the back neckline, I will use a value of 3 inches by 1 inch. I will now use my French curve to draw the back neckline curve like this. For the front neckline, I will use a value of 3 inches by 3 inches. I will also use the French curve to draw the front neckline curve like this. Next, I will divide my shoulder to shoulder measurement by 2 and this is equal to 16 divided by 2 and this is equal to 8 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 8 inches on the shoulder lines starting from the center back and the center front respectively. I will also measure and mark the 8 inches on the arm hole line starting from the center front and the center back. I will connect these two points together like this using my ruler and this will give me the slanted shoulder lines for the back and the front patterns. I will also connect these two points together like this with my ruler using broken lines for both the back and the front patterns. I will now calculate my bust circumference plus one inch for ease divided by four. And this is equal to 39 plus 1 all over 4 and this is equal to 10 inches. So on the arm hole line, I will go ahead to measure and mark 10 inches like this. Starting from the center back and the center front. For the back pattern, I will go ahead to locate the middle point on the broken line like this. I will go in by half an inch like this. I will now connect these two points together with my ruler. I will also connect these two lower points together with a French curve like this. For the front pattern, I will go up by 3 inches from the ammo line on the broken line like this. I will go in by 3 quarter of an inch like this. I will now connect these two points together with my ruler. Next, I will connect these two up together with my French curve like this. I will now move over to the waistline. I will estimate my waist circumference measurement plus 1 inch for ease divided by 4 and this is equal to 35 plus 1 all over 4 and this is equal to 9 inches. So on the waistline, I will go ahead to measure and mark 9 inches starting from the center back and the center front.
Next, I will estimate my hip circumference plus 1 inch for E is divided by 4 and this is equal to 43 plus 1 all over 4 and this is equal to 11 inches. So at the end of the pattern, I will go ahead to measure and mark 11 inches starting from the center back and the center front like this. I will now connect these three points together like this. That is, I will connect the bust, the waist and the hips to give me the side seams of the back and the front patterns. At this point, you can decide if you want to alter the armhole into a sleeveless armhole pattern. To do this, I will use the, upper, the lower part of the back and the front armholes by one inch. And I will reduce the width of the shoulders at the shoulder tip by half an inch for both the back and the front patterns. And I will redraw the armhole curves. This is completely optional and you can skip this step especially if you think the armhole may be too tight for you or for your customer. I will also curve the end of the pattern. So I will raise the back and the front side seams by one inch and I will lower the center back and the center front by one inch. I will now curve the aims of the back and the front pattern using my French curve. I will now go ahead to cut out the back and the front dartless basic bodies patterns. Next, I will alter the back neckline curve. I will widen the neck by 1 inch and the neck depth I will lower it by 1.5 inches. I will now redraw the back neckline curve like this. I will trim off the excess paper like this. This is the front pattern. At the center front, I will measure and mark 1.5 inches twice like this, upwards from the armhole line. I will widen the neckline by 1 inch, just like I did for the back pattern. I will connect these two points together like this with my ruler. I will now trim off the excess paper like this. From the new neck point, I will measure and mark one inch two times like this. I will now connect these two points together with slight, with slight curves like this to create slash lines. I will label the sections I will now cut out the slash lines paper I have already drawn this vertical guideline away from the edge of the paper. I will now tilt the main pattern piece so that the M touches the vertical guideline like this. The upper part of the main pattern should be 2 inches away from the vertical guideline. I 
I will pin in place. I will also go ahead and pin the two upper slashed pieces in place like this, two inches apart. I will place the two pieces horizontally like this. The upper piece has to be at right angles with the vertical guideline. The two slash pieces should be arranged and pinned in such a way that the upper edges of the two pieces align with the shoulder line of the main pattern piece. Ignore the pattern that extends beyond the vertical guideline. It will be later trimmed off when I'm cutting out the pattern. I will fold the excess pattern paper at the upper part like this and this will be used to create the neckline facing. I will cut out the pattern like this. At the shoulders, I will fold the pleats in place first, like this. I will now draw a connecting line with my ruler, like this. After drawing the connecting line, I will now cut it out. I will mark the position of the pleats on the pattern like this. Then I will remove the old pattern pieces. I will make the neckline facing 5 inches long. So I will measure and mark 5 inches like this at the center front. I will curve it to the side like this using my curve. I will now trim off the excess pattern paper. So these are the two pattern pieces that will be used to make the sleeveless cow neck top. The two pieces will be cut on fold and they will also be cut on bias. So now I have pinned the two pattern pieces on the Dutchess satin fabric. The fabric was folded on bias. Assuming that this paper is the fabric that I'm working with, this is how the fold fabric will be folded on bias in a triangular form like this. And the center front and the center back of the two pattern pieces will be pinned along the folded edge. And this is exactly what I have done on the fabric. I used half an inch seam allowance all through except for the side seam and the end where I used one inch seam allowance. I will now cut out the front and the back pieces like this. I will transfer the position of the pleats to the fabric by notching like this. I will also notch the point where the neckline facing starts from like this. After this, I will remove the patterns from the fabric.
This is the front piece. I have already notched the position of the pleats at the shoulders. So I will fold and secure the pleats, the pleats in place with my pins like this. I will fold the pleats towards the neckline facing upwards and I will make sure I fold the left and the right arm pleats towards the same direction that is both pleats on both the left and the right hand side of the blouse should be facing upwards the same direction. I will now take it to my sewing machine and baste in place. This is the back piece and I will use this bias tape to finish the neckline. The seam allowance on the bias tape is one quarter of an inch but the seam allowance at the neckline is half an inch. So I will trim off about one quarter of an inch from the neckline before going ahead to fix the bias tape to the neckline. So I will do the trimming now. So now I have basted the pleats in place, as you can see. I have also aimed the neckline facing. Also, the bias tape has been used to fit the neckline of the back piece. I will now place the front piece on top of the back piece like this, right side to right side. I will wrap the facing around the back shoulders like this. I will pin in place, taking note of the point where the facing starts from, which I have already notched. After doing this, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. It is now time to join the side seams together. I will do a French seam for this. So the front and back pieces will be placed wrong sides together and I will stitch on my sewing machine using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done. I will now trim the half an inch seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch like this. I will turn the blouse to the wrong side. I will now take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch using the remaining half an inch sewing allowance. Remember that I used one inch for the side seam allowance while I was cutting out the fabric. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. And this is what the inside of the blouse look, looks like. See how neat the French seam is. It is now time to finish the armhole of the top using bias tape. I will also trim off one quarter of an inch seam allowance from the armhole just like I did for the back neckline. I will now use this bias tape to finish the armhole of the top. I will also aim the lower part of the blouse. So now that has been done, I have used the bias tape to finish the armhole of the top. 
and I've also aimed the lower part of the blouse. So that's it guys, we are done. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing and do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.